Hello everybody and welcome back to another Houdini tutorial. Um, this tutorial is a little bit different. It's building on top of uh, the protein data bank tool set I am building uh, for Houdini, which basically allows you to bring in uh, physically accurate models of uh, protein information and then work with it inside the software. And I wanted to demonstrate through uh, several mini, mini tutorials on how these tools work and what you can do. Uh, but this first kind of main um, kind of introduction video is just a little overview for everything that will appear in the package if you download the toolkit. But before we get started, I do want to apologize. I haven't been making tutorials. And life got a little bit chaotic this year, family-wise, everything-wise, <laughs> work-wise. And uh, things really took off for a lot of different things I was doing in the Houdini community. So without going into a lot more other topics, uh, let's get started with this. So, the Protein Data Bank tool set is something new that you can download off of my website. If you go down to more VFX help in that section, you can just find it there and click on it and the download will start to happen. Um, when you download it, you will receive a zip folder that will have all of these information in it. And so this is the latest build, uh, 2.4.15, as of this video being released. And it comes with a series of HDAs. And all of these HDAs have different things in it. So date modified, let's start at the top because then those will be all the improvements, the most recent improvements to all the other if HDAs. Uh, the new ones that come in with this package are called the amino acid types, backbone ribbon um, update, density checker, quark visualization, amino acid data, um, and just those five. Uh, but you also have more additional content uh, if you go to the demo files, example data, and instructions and toolkit content. So if you go to the instructions in here, you can find the credits for the toolkit. So everyone who really kind of helped me build this um, HDA information. So if you're ever curious about what certain HDAs do, instructional guide of kind of how to get started, install everything, and read me. So. If we go to the example data, and here are a list of proteins that we know for sure work with the tool set um, and that you can extract information and setups from. So you can just click on one of these folders and you'll find the PDB information that's downloaded from PDB. So feel free to explore those at your own discretion. So if we go to the demo files, and here we have our example build. So if we click on it and we'll let Houdini load up, build will be the uh, build where you can see how to put the tools together and see how you can set them up to visualize something. So we'll just kind of dive into this file so you can kind of explore it overall um, and get a better idea of what's going on. So if we go over here to the amino acid example in here, you can see um, that it's referencing a PDB file that exists on my in a different directory. So basically what I'm going to do is really just go to example data, not DNA, let's go to diabetes proteins, select them. It'll take a few seconds to load up and boom, we have something that's happening in the scene. And now here you can see, it's kind of hard to understand what's going on if you take a look at everything that's going on here. So let's kind of work down through these amino acid nodes that I'm using. So first we kind of bring in our file um, so if we go here, we can see that we have a collection of points in 3D space. And what I'm doing next is just transforming them to the origin, uh, just so I kind of know where it is overall through the scene. Um, I'm just going to, there we go. That works. And as you can see, like the information that comes in from PDB is very big. Like it's almost around 75 meters. So if you feel the need to shrink it down, you absolutely can do that. So by 0.5, you can just rescale everything to a size that's kind of manageable. So down here, we have something called the Atomic Property SOP. And basically, this will give me um, the information to say, OK, I can look at the structure and decide which type of elements are in the different metal groups that exist in the periodic table. It will also assign information that exists inside the periodic table um, per like atom. So you can see the densities, the electron negativity of the atom, the melting point, 
um, the boiling point that has been added on and the atomic mass overall. So uh, this is a really useful solve if you want to quickly diagnose uh, what type of elements that exist within your structure. Um, we'll break it down in a video that's specific to that tool in a second, uh, but we're going to give everything a rough overview for today. If we go to the amino acids uh, soft here, it will load up, hopefully, and you can see that it creates basically almost a space filling diagram currently of, or stick in model uh, diagram of a chosen amino acid within the structure. So if we switch between things like this, we can see if these separate amino acids exist in the structure and what their total um, atomic count is as well. If we shrink down the kind of point radius scale, um, oh, that's way too tiny. <laughs> um, so we'll just shrink it down to, let's say, 0 0.3. But you can kind of see now the connection points that exist between the atoms. So it's really just finessing parts of the structures to make the model kind of, it's kind of a flexible way of modeling the structure up to you of how you'd like to present something within Houdini. Connection points, if we wanted to, let's say, make the wire radius between everything smaller, we can do that as well. Um, there's options for color here as well. If you want to visualize different elements, you can do that. Or if you just want grayscale, you can do that as well. Um, and the cool thing about this HDA is that in the output, first output, it outputs all the modeling information. But if we drop down another null, so if you go right here, go out points, it will only output the point information of the model, but it will still retain all the attributes from the HDA. So if you wanted to process um, these points later, you can absolutely do that. Um, so if we go to the geometry spreadsheet, we still have our density, electron negativity, and melting point information, uh, but we also have p-scale information for the particles as well now um, that is can, can be customized, van der Waal radius, and a bunch of other attributes that you can use to manipulate everything. Um, and you can see right here that there's something called an inactive group and an active group. So I wanted to basically give you the option um, let's say if you wanted to make certain amino acids in the structure active and the other parts of the structure inactive and then make your own custom solver and use those groups to kind of bend and twist the points over time, you can do that. So that's also an option. You can kind of explore at your own discretion. Um, it might feed into something else I'm working on later. Um, so if we go over here to the amino acid data, this one's fun. So basically this places all the amino acids in if they're acidic, basic, neutral, um, or unique. So if we switch colors, we can turn this on and can see the different groupings of the amino acids in the structure. So that's really awesome, and I totally recommend checking those out. You can also look at the weight and pH levels of the structures as well. So I'm going to turn all of these color options off. And you can see that it's vi definitely visualizing something <laughs> because it's orange, and basically it's picking up the color data from this kind of HD up here, so always remember to turn off your color visualizers if you um, are moving on to the next stage of your model. So going back down to the amino acid data, you can basically take a look at the residue weight within the structure like this, um, and then you can also arrange the residue visualization options if you want to. You can look at the acidity, and you can look at the base, if there's any base values um, in the acidic range of the structure as well. So that's pretty awesome. Totally recommend checking that out. Um, and then there's also options for data unit visualization, which is like molecular weight. So you can also visualize that there as well. Um, for the, you might notice something up here called non <laughs> Um, And if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but that's a modeling option. So if we go down here, you'll see that there are three inputs, I mean, three outputs. Uh, one is out points, so it's just outpointing the points. Uh, one is a model, so we'll attach a model um, to everything in the structure, like this. And then over here, you have these circles, which are basically visualizing this option right here. And if we merge them together, you can see which atoms in the structure, um, depending on what type of color you want to visualize, uh, correlates with non chillery um, so that's pretty awesome, and I would recommend playing around with this if you like want to visualize more parts of amino acids. There's also something that 
is new. I'm going to go back over here, amino acid types. So if we go here and we drop down this particular um, HDA and we go down here, what this will allow us to do is visualize more options within the structure. So we can say, where are my sulfur atoms? And it will find all the sulfur atoms in the structure right here. Um, it will find all the nonpolar amino acids. Um, and there doesn't seem to be any currently. Um, but we can also select what type of amino acids that we want to visualize as well through this. So we can say if we want to isolate a group of amino acids and only visualize those, we can do that as well. Um, and so let's go over here. If we look at these groups, we have non-essential amino acids, conditional amino acids in the structure, and we also have this all amino acids group will allow you to visualize all of the amino acids in the structure. So if we go like this, all amino acids, um, we'll be able to see all of these groups. Uh, and nothing will be deleted within that HDA. Uh, we also have positive amino acids. There's no polar amino acids, but we definitely have a lot of nonpolar and non-essential amino acids within the structure. Um, so let's try and visualize those. So we can also look for at proteins for bodily fun functions. So there's um, essential amino acids, which we don't really have. Uh, Non-essential amino acids. <laughs> let's look at that. Um, my visualizer is wrong, my bad. Uh, so we have non-essential in there, we also have essential in there, and we have conditional amino acids in the structure as well. Um, so you can take a look at that if you want to, let's say, really isolate a group and you only wanted to look at the non-essential amino acids, what you could do is go non-essential amino acids, and it would really only grab those. Some uh, amino acids overlap, so just be aware of that. Or if you only wanted to visualize sulfur atoms, you could do that as well. Um, so that would be right there. Once again, this has options for visualizing the points or visualizing the model. So if we go to the second input, uh, that's where the points are. If we go to the first input, that's where the model is itself. So there's different options for visualizing different things here. And if we go down to our quark example, we can actually visualize um, quarks in proteins. <laughs> that's something that's new to this toolkit. Um, people say, oh, is it necessary? Um, it really depends on what you want to do. If you want to show off, absolutely you can. Um, and this is a really great tool to show off with. It can only really visualize up and down quarks within the structure. It can't show anti-quarks or strange quarks simply because they don't really exist in neutrons or protons. So um, that would be another section of the toolkit we haven't really got to yet. Here they are. <laughs> um, I'm not going to dive too much into this HDA, but it does allow you for different um, visualization options when it comes to visualizing um, protons and neutrons and electrons. Um, so if you wanted to visualize things like that across the structures, you can. Quarks, if you wanted to scale certain quarks, you can do that as well. Um, so right now we are looking at neutron down quarks. If we want to look at protein down quark, uh, I mean proton down quarks, we would switch this to a P and you would see the structure change a little bit. Um, and so you'd be looking at the proton down quarks in the structure. Um, there are no quarks as far as I'm aware of in electrons. But anyway, I'll explain how this works later. Uh, but this does also export additional quark information, uh, such as the spin information for quarks um, and also how many exist in each amino acid per proton and neutron within the structure and element. That will be a different kind of mini tutorial in itself. Um, but I digress. We also have something called the density checker now. The density checker allows us to basically check the density of a protein and see what its molecular weight is, volume metrics there are, all that fun stuff. So I'm just going to wait for it to think for a few seconds, center this to the origin so we can take a look at it and then move forward from there. As you can see, it needs two nodes to work, the atomic properties and the ionic properties. Uh, but if we go into here, we can check the atomic density color, gmol color throughout the structure. And we also have options for um, checking out the overall density of the structure as well. And those values can go into your further solving calculations if you want to. Um, the one thing that you do have to pay attention to here is the structure weight. 
So the structure weights um, is going to be different with every single structure, and I personally can't predict every single protein in the universe and put it into a data set and then put it into Houdini. But basically, if you go to PDB, the protein data bank, and you go to the page with the protein you are looking at, uh, it will give you the structure weight, and this is where you enter the structure weight for your protein. Be put into the calculations uh, later on. So this is a really cool kind of checking thing um, that's really useful if you want to get into the numbers of things. The next thing we kind of have that's new in this toolkit is the backbone ribbon example. So I got some great feedback from somebody in the VFX community and also in the scientific community who was really into Houdini. And they said, hey, if you can get arrows to point on the direction of your like backbone model curve, um, this would probably <laughs> be more effective for us as scientists using the software um, and also be more useful in your tool set. So if we increase the wire radius here, um, you can actually see this is a work in progress because you can see some arrows are still overlapping and those are going to be fixed. Uh, but overall, they still point in the direction of the curve like this. Um, the thicker your curve, the probably more realistic the arrows will actually hug it. Um, but yes, the arrows always will point in the direction of the curve here. I'm just working on a different way of trying to make them less kind of janky and overlappy, but overall they are pointing in the direction of the curve and it's doable for now. So in the next build of this protein toolkit, um, this arrow problem will hopefully be fixed. But as of right now, it is pointing in the direction of the curve of the protein. Um, there's also options for visualizing different amino acids along the curve as well. And there's also, if you want to turn the text off, you can. Um, if you want to turn the arrows on and off, you can do that as well. Um, or change their color. So, feel free to take a look at those new improvements to uh, the Protein Toolkit. And that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Um, as this is kind of more of a little welcome back to the channel and everything like that. So in the next couple of videos, you're going to see me break down these tools and get more specific with them. Mini videos surrounding each one of these tools, um, in case you're curious on using that. So, I'll see you in the next video, and thanks for holding on and watching my channel, and I'll see you all later. Bye.